We're going to make a motion to come back in public setting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Roll call, please. We're back in session, Ms. Allsbay? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Breach? Yeah. Mr. Grillo? Yeah. Mr. Lotaraco? Yeah. Mr. Remy? Yeah. Ms. Ricks? Yeah. Mr. Saunders? Yeah. Ms. Lazinski? Yeah. Ms. Cook? Here. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, the board's going to um, go into public participation. Uh, in accordance with board policy 0167, the Asbury Park Board of Education recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and other matters of importance and provides members of the public with the opportunity to express themselves on school matters of community interest. The public comment portion of the meeting is not a question and answer session and all public comments shall be directed to the board president. Members of the public who wish to make public comments must be recognized by the board president and provide his or her name, municipality of residence, and group affiliation if applicable. All public comments shall be directed to the board president and are limited to three minutes in duration. Members of the public who do not follow the foregoing rules and or interfere with the orderly operation of the board meeting may be removed from the meeting. At this time, I'll open a public participation. evening again Sheila Brazil um, I'm here to talk about the school uniforms at Asbury Park High School <coughs> excuse me um, the colors the, for the pants are khaki could we get like maybe that changed to black or khaki because a lot of different places use black pants and black you know it's it's easier to find and they're a lot cheaper than the khakis because when you, you can't always find the, the khakis in the right size, and when you do find them, it's like really expensive. And then there, if there's a policy that if parents can't afford the uniforms, do you have a form where maybe they can get some help from the district? Thank you, and you ha all have a blessed night. Hello, I'm Takia Foster, a resident of Asbury Park. Um, I hear, when I come to the board meetings, I hear a lot Can you speak up a little bit? I've been projecting my voice all day. No, okay, I'm stop. <laughs> I hear a lot talking about the things that are done for the special needs students here in Asbury Park. They also have the Dream Academy. Uh, for like the, I guess what you consider the talented and gifted children here in Asbury Park. Um, but if we're speaking realistically, when we come, when we think about most of the students here or our population here at Asbury Park, most of them have uh, a background where they're not really college bound. And with not being college bound and not knowing the alternatives out there, more than likely they're going to end up in the same dead end jobs, repeating the cycle of the community that we currently have living in Asbury Park. I know that you currently have like a medical program where uh, you have some students who may have like a NHA certification um, when they leave um, Asbury Park High School, but I believe it's just like patient care. Have you guys considered looking into other career and technical education programs that can probably foster a career path for the students who are not college bound here in New Jersey? That way they actually have a, a vision or a plan for after they leave high school instead of turning to the streets or turning to retail or fast food. Just an opinion. At this time, we'll close public participation. So to address the uh, two comments, uh, Ms. Brazil, um, as you know, we have our student advisory committee um, and that um, esteemed lady who's sitting right behind you with the black mask. She sits on that uh, monthly 
committee with our students, which we've been doing for the last year um, and a half so far. Um, the color schemes were um, bought by, well, decided by the students. We will revisit that um, with the current student advisory um, to give additional options, but that will be something that the students will um, have a heavily um, voice in the decision. Um, one of the things that um, I am trying to develop is student advocacy. Um, as, as you heard Sarah this evening um, speak her perspective, vision, opinion on what transpired, um, and that's what we are aiming to do. Um, she is also a student who sits on the student advisory committee, so she has you know great access to voice in her position and the like. So we also provide um, families the opportunity to um, fill out a form if they have financial needs. We also this year sent about 60 shirts uh, to the high school um, as well as to the other buildings to support those students who may not have had those forms completed. Um, those forms, if, you're, if a child is at the high school and needs a shirt, um, part of the process is go to the office, see someone, they'll support that. Um, so we have been doing that. That is something that we will continue. There are some lessons learned that we will implement next year in terms of when we do the uniforms in the, in the summer, they really are short sleeves. So we're also going to be looking at winter and fall, you know, late fall, um, long sleeve um, attire as well. But that's going to be something that we will talk with the students about in terms of as we expand that opportunity, what do those things look like and what makes the most sense. So that's on my agenda to discuss with the students, along with a bunch of other student-created activities, such as the SLAP program, S-L-A-P, not literally hitting someone, student leadership at Asbury Park, which was developed by not only Sarah, but also TJ and another high school student in Guadalupe. Um, who are very interested in vetting students to um, not only help students at the high school in terms of transitioning from seventh and eighth grade, but also underclassmen being mentored by upperclassmen. Um, they've also come with various ideas in order to help the high school students mentor at the other locations in our district, such as the upper elementary and the two elementary schools with our holiday bazaar, which they um, developed and talked about at our student advisory committee meetings. So those are some things that we are presently talking about and actively working on. Another project from our students, which was started by, which was mentioned by student Nathan at the upper elementary school about food conservation, given that we're waste, that they believe that we're wasting food in terms of the bag lunches, had to explain to them the federal funds and connected to the bag breakfasts and bag lunches, that we have to account for all of those things. So we're, they're coming up with another program started by a student at the upper elementary school to help us conserve and stay within the guidelines of the federal food regulations and the funding that we get in order to make sure that we're not being wasteful but also beginning to get those ideas to Sedesco so we can work collaboratively with them from the students perspective on making sure that their voices are heard and understood because they've also come up with concerns about the options in terms of lunches and breakfasts and things of that nature, which is a standing um, item that we talk about monthly. Okay. So, um, ma'am, the, in terms of the um, options for students, once we repurpose Obama school, um, that is something that we will be um, heavily discussing um, that I did talk with board members about when we did the walkthrough at the Obama School for the uh, central office location. So we're presently thinking about and talking about uh, with some local um, apprentice programs on what usually, excuse me, utilizing some of the space that we have at the Obama School to help support some of those job training initiatives for students that would uh, benefit from that. 
Um, so that will be one option that we're looking to do. Yes, we're always looking to examine and evaluate our CTE programs, our, our um, nursing or our, uh, public health um, program right now and is extremely successful for those students. They're leaving out of here making um, a decent living wage for 18 year old student or 18 year old adult but those students who graduated last year have other higher aspirations so it is definitely an entry level position just like those other entry level uh, whether it's electri electrician or plumbing but we will also have to look at retrofitting our own facilities to do that and in partnership with some of the local unions to see what they're going to contribute so that's not um, a short-term response that's really a long-term um, opportunity that we want to make sure is befitting our students and their interests um, but we are looking at that in conjunction with our state approved CTE programs so the CTE programs provide a pathway to graduation which are very clear and have very um, demarcated expectations c connected to the curriculum and the course sequence the apprentice program does not necessarily have that but in partnership with us utilizing that, that space, um, with the city library having the swing space there and other things, that's going to be one of the other aspects that we're going to look to have um, developed there by the time we move in. But it won't happen simultaneous to the central office move in. So I want to be really realistic. We need to cut back on some of the funds that we're spending and moving from the central office 910 4th Avenue building into the Obama building will have a significant uh, financial saving not significant in the terms of tens of millions of dollars I want to be very clear but significant that we are not leasing a space that way we can utilize the Obama space and we keep our students who live on that side of town from it also being caught up in the gentrification on that side of the town. So there are a lot of different moving pieces, but I want to be clear on the intent and purpose on how we plan on utilizing the Obama space um, in the future. I think I gave a preliminary superintendent's report. I dropped the mic a little bit, but um, just just a point of um, personal privilege. Um, today, um, we rather yesterday um, at the Bradley, excuse me, at the Thurgood Marshall Elementary School, um, I had the opportunity to talk with the gentleman of Alpha Phi Alpha, which is one of four historically black fraternities. Um, and makes up the Divine Nine. I think, um, Mr. Remy, you're a member of one of those organizations, at Kappa Alpha Psi. Um, okay. I'm a member of another, Omega Psi Phi. Um, and we have partnered with these group of black men to come in and volunteer um, at Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall was a member of Alpha Phi Alpha, as was Martin Luther King. Um, these gentlemen are volunteering their time. They're going to do the background checks. Uh, in order to come in and do a mentoring program. They also want to support our high school students with SAT prep at no cost to the district. These are utilizing um, organizations whose creed and call and mission is to uplifting the community. Um, and these are um, residents of Monmouth County. Some of them have either lived in Asbury Park, raised in Asbury Park, but still live and reside in the Monmouth and Ocean County area and their duty in charge as part of um, being in these organizations is community service. Um, and so I wanted to thank them publicly for um, taking on the charge of volunteering at Thurgood Marshall. Um, I'm a little impartial being a member of Omega Psi Phi. They are volunteering at Bradley Elementary School um, and doing some of the same similar programs free of charge to the district um, and mentoring and volunteering at the school. Um, so it is critically important when we talk about 
um, organizations that we may not be familiar with, but their intent and purpose and understanding on how they have an impact and what their charge is in terms of volunteering and uplifting the community. Um, so I wanted to just personally recognize two of those organizations that are volunteering and giving back to students that look like them. And these are black men when people say that they're not visible or active in the community. So I wanted to uh, personally recognize that. Um, then as far as my report, uh, where I'll move to a consent agenda with the exception of items all items on B1 through B5, with the exception of nine, until the board is ready um, to receive that. If um, we'll investigate the, that's the Empower, as well as the um, item 11, which is on B5. So I'm omitting B9 excuse me, on page B5, number nine and number 11. Um, and then all items up to, through page B6. Point of clarity, so nine and 11 were, were omitting from the consent Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm tabling them. We're tabling them? Yes. Okay. There was some unreadiness from the curriculum, the CNI committee. I wanna make sure before, although there was a presentation, there is still some information that needs to be provided. I wanna make sure that all the information is provided um, is uh, to clarity so that the board, when they vote, they're voting with full transparency and understanding. Okay. If My there is not, then I wanna make sure that I table it till that is done. But can we, can we make sure that with the number nine that, that we could? I, I do understand that. Uh, that about the deadline? Yeah, yeah, I understand that, but that was, as, as the person in charge of that, I'll make sure that that is clear. If it is at no cost to the district, I'm not understanding a deadline. So there's other clarity that may need to be provided. We have a motion for all items B1 through B6, excluding 9 and 11. Second. All in favor? B1 through B6, excluding 9 and 11. Ms. Lezinski? Yes. Ms. Alsbay? Yes. Ms. Breach? Yes. 
Mr. Brillo? Yes. Ms. Alls Bay? Yes. Ms. Breach? Have a motion for all items C1 number one through C6 number four. Questions, comments? This is all items C11 through C6 number four. Ms. Lazinski? Yes. Ms. Cook? Yes. Ms. Salisbury? Yes. Reach. On Mr. Grillo? Yes, on anything except bills paid to the New Jersey American Water. Thank you. Mr. Lanarocco? Yes. Mr. Remy? Yes. Ms. Ricks? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. All items carried. Madam President, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, board members, the motion to deny the grievance presented by the APEA during tonight's executive session. Second. This is to deny the grievance heard this evening. Ms. Lazinski? Yes. to appoint Patrick J. Madden as special counsel to conduct a personnel investigation at the rate of $150 per hour. And just so that, uh, for the record, uh, well, I'm sorry, I have a motion to make a second. I'll second. So now it's time for discussion. I'll just read into the record the actual resolution, which I'll then provide to Mr. Hastings uh, so that it could appear in the minutes. Be resolved that the Asbury Park Board of Education retains the services of Patrick J. Madden, Esquire, as special counsel to conduct an investigation of a personnel matter at the rate of $150 per hour. The business administrator is authorized to take all actions that are necessary in order to effectuate this action of the board. If there are no other questions, we can have a roll call. Mr. Brillo? Yes. Ms. Lazinski? Yes. Ms. Salisbury? Yes. Yes. Mr. Lanaraka? Yes. Mr. Remy? Yes. Ms. Ricks? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. Ms. Cook? Yes. Motion carries. I'll make a motion to adjourn.